Digital technology offers the promise of intimacy, amusement, and even a longer life. With the ability to do billions of calculations in our pockets, it seems we've discovered a new dimension in which everything in our lives can be improved and tracked and then turned into money. But is convenience, profit, and surveillance the only use for these new powers? Now a new generation of rebel geeks are using their skills to challenge the tech giants and enable a different technological future, one where people are not the product. Não, eu acho, eu acho que dá pra jogar assim, Renan. Não, cara, expõe muito o sacolão. Eu expõe acho muito dá. aqui o comércio do cara, dá pra ver que foi do comércio do cara, tá maluco. Aqui, porque tá, tá vendo? Ah, tá lá caindo aí. Eu pego o fuzil, pega o, o primeiro é. pega o fuzil, o fuzil pega o fuzil do canabalho. Não, 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 é o copo. Já tá Vai dando. Dar? Hum. Passar por. É, estará na outra base da Canitá. Ou então pode ir por trás no beco. A gente tem até brincado, quando a gente fala sobre esse trabalho algumas vezes, que a gente está com uma nova tecnologia inovadora de comunicação dentro da favela, mas que tem no celular de todo mundo. E aqui a gente tem muitas casas furadas, porque os policiais eles ficam naquela parte da mata, dando tiro para cá para baixo. Então por isso que a gente vê. Tantas casas furadas e tanta situação, porque é uma, é uma zona de muito confronto é, de ambas as forças armadas dentro do território. Assim, esse, 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 essa localidade aqui foi onde aconteceu o caso do Eduardo, um menino de 10 anos. Que... A cena mais triste. A cena mais tá triste, eu acho que de, de toda a atuação do complexo foi a cena mais triste. Acho que a gente chegar aqui e ver a galera nesse pedacinho aqui, ver a galera desesperada, gritando. Que, que sem, sem ter muito conhecimento, a galera já, já mesmo que acho que não sei se é instintivo, já entende o poder de um vídeo, do que o vídeo tem, né? Assim, caraca, graças a Deus, chegou alguém com uma câmera. Não, e tinha uma galera também aqui na, 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 na janela que via as pessoas chegando e acenavam. Foi aqui, é aqui, foi aqui. Então foi fácil achar. O policial punhou arma na mão de jovem baleado e fez dois disparos. Veja o vídeo. Bota na Isabelle. Bota. Eu tenho. Ele tá botando ele. Não, eles estão dando tiro. Ele tá falando com o moleque ainda. Olha lá, botou, botou outro tiro em cima do moleque. Ah, mentira. Olha lá, deu a pistola. Coisa, algum equilíbrio nessas forças, né? 
antes, se eu simplesmente falasse, se ela simplesmente falasse que isso daí aconteceu, uhum. como a gente vem Verdade. dizendo inúmeras vezes ao longo dos anos, Verdade. ninguém ia nos dar voz, ninguém ia nos levar a sério e tudo mais. Mas ela falou, ela mostrou, ela divulgou e ela meteu a cara se correu o risco. Né? Então, acho que o desafio, a tecnologia ela veio para fazer muita coisa boa aí, mas ainda os mecanismos jurídicos que a gente tem, os mecanismos de poder que a gente tem, ainda são muito é, prontos para talvez até recusar isso como uma prova. Bota aí, Zé Pele. Bota. Ele tá botando. E aí eles estão dando tiro. Ele tá falando com o moleque ainda. Ela botou, botou, eu tive em cima do moleque. Tá, ah, mentira. I'm Harlow Holmes. I'm a software developer and digital security trainer. And I'm the lead architect of a library called Informacam, which sits in the center of the Camera V app. I mean, I think you wrote this code to pull in anything that might exist. Pretty right? much, pretty much, because um, whatever you can <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Because why not? A couple of years ago, I was in a class that Nathan taught. And uh, for a project, I had decided that I wanted to sync up video and images with other data points that were exposed in order to, you know, get a kind of who, what, when, where, why, and possibly even how of a particular event that you see visually. Around the world, let's say, There are a number of satellites that are constantly orbiting our globe. And they usually beam down position info to devices such as our cell phones um, that have a pretty good accuracy and also have the unintended effect of giving us a timestamp as well, which we use rather than your phone's clock in order to tell what time it was. If you're standing anywhere on Earth and can receive a GPS signal, your device is then able to triangulate where you are in relation to it. And several of the sources that you also use to triangulate your position can also be used by Camera V to further cooperate where you are, such as your cell phone tower or even nearby Wi-Fi networks. Right now, there's more photos, more videos than ever um, being put in from social media into court, they call it open source, right, in the legal process, where they go out and source things off the open web and then use that as evidence, for instance. But the process of verifying who and what and when, it's really this manual labor. We have to go back and kind of dig through all of this to kind of piece it together. And what we're trying to do is just create that from the start. So, so creating a kind of DNA inside the visual media itself, such that it's there from the beginning. Actually see more of What What's like. interesting about open source development, especially with Android software, is that just about everything is accessible using an API. An API, being an application programming interface, is kind of like a door that allows you to uh, access certain, uh, certain assets of the phone. In this case, especially with Camera V, it was uh, the interface to the hardware. I can never find any privacy screens in any of these shops. We used to be able to fix things ourselves and understand how they work, and now they're, you know, almost hermetically sealed behind, you know, many tiny screws of which we have to find a special screwdriver for. If you open it up, you'll actually see that it really is uh, simply a computer inside of this case. This is the camera. It's quite powerful, and it's got a uh, interface on the back for the motherboard. This is where all the data flows. And inside here, we have the lens and the sensors that focus and capture the light and turn it into bits, right? And this is where it then flows into the motherboard through the bus 
which is then captured into the general purpose CPU that powers the Android operating system. So usually when someone talks about taking a picture, what they mean is using a photographic sensor to capture the visible light emanating from a subject, a person or a place. When we talk about taking a picture, we're actually talking about capturing a much broader spectrum of energy like infrared spectrum and radio waves and speed and gravity and other atmospheric energy coming in that you don't perceive with your eyes. Fortunately for us, smartphone devices have additional sensor components that can gather these things. So when we talk about taking a picture, it's about gathering the full spectrum, the visible and the invisible, into a more complete photograph. This is the tricky part too, this guy here. Maybe I can get a job here fixing cell phones. Mm -hmm. You already have a job fixing cell phones, <laughs> I Nathan. I do have a job fixing. Different kind of job. <laughs> um, no, she's Android. <laughs> but now I've been thinking about committing myself to iPhone again because okay. of Go. Go? Go cross-compiling onto iPhone now. I would never use an iPhone though, so. Yeah. Yeah, pretty nice. Yeah. I, I'm not really a fan of uh, the particular barrier to entry that they place for people who want to get started developing. Yeah. Uh, I think on a theoretical level, um, I, you know, kind of push back against Apple because of that. I also think about it as Star Trek versus Star Wars a little bit. Me too. Because Android is Star Wars. <laughs> and iPhone is Star Trek. Uh, yeah, I guess. Wait, so. you think the opposite? Well, I guess if I were to make any uh, uh, any argument, although I definitely do get what you mean, uh, I think Android lends itself more to Federation mm -hmm. than than the iOS system does. And also, quite frankly, what it boils down to is I like Star Trek better. <laughs> so. So um, you guys have the um, the phones ready, and um, the camera of the app is already installed. Uh, it should be um, on your home screen. Okay. So in the upper right corner, um, select proof mode. Once proof mode is activated, it sort of it sort of works like a little black box recorder for sensor metadata, right? Like, do you guys know what metadata is? So it's information about the video, and and the generic definition for metadata is data about data. Here in the United States, the word metadata has been all over the news uh, because of the secret program of the NSA uh, of collecting uh, metadata for phone calls. In, in short, metadata can be used to corroborate what an image shows us or what a witness um, tell, tells about uh, what's happening in the image. And it can be used to reveal additional contextual information about what we're seeing. So it works in the background, and now you can open your favorite camera app or just the camera app that's the default camera app on the phone. And you can start shooting just the usual way you do this. You don't have to do anything different at this point. It just it works in the background, records uh, your information, and automatically imports all this into camera V. 70 foot precinct would be where I would definitely be at because look how red it is. So that right there is telling me that there's a lot of complaints given by civilians about police misconduct in that precinct. They are more organized. They can do it through the mapping that is public. So we use the CCRB uh, map, we use the NYPD map, and we also use the intel that we gather from people in the street. This is something that's spreading globally. You know, people naturally, instinctively know that pulling out a cell phone camera, you're going to record. And this is something that you can now, through social media, let the world see. That's, you know, a shift in who controls what.
Então a gente vive, vive dentro de um sistema que, que discursa democracia, mas na realidade atua com repressão é, de diversas formas. Então acredito que eles também vão se organizar é, até de forma tecnológica, principalmente no intuito de vigiar todos os que, tra que trabalham com comunicação alternativa. Por outro lado, a gente está lutando pelos direitos, pelas, pelas coisas certas, então a gente também vai evoluir, vai buscar a pensar assim. É, eu acredito muito que a tecnologia ela é uma ferramenta de transformar a realidade. A pensar novos caminhos, mas eu acredito que a tecnologia é uma potência enorme que todos deveriam ter acesso, então... Good evening. My name is Yvette Alberting-Tame. Um, as I'm the executive director of Witness, there's one group who is amazing. They are the smartest, they are the most effective, and they are the bravest. So my honor is to work with Colectivo Papo Reto and Raul Santiago. É, é muito agradável estar aqui em uma noite como essa, falando sobre questões sociais no Brasil. É agradável porque as nossas noites, como vocês viram no vídeo, normalmente são de confrontos e de tiroteios. O Rio de Janeiro ele é uma grande favela. E o meu sonho para a favela Rio de Janeiro é que as pessoas que não moram em nossos lares e os nossos governantes não vejam as favelas como locais de problemas, fazendo assim a violência crescer cada vez mais naqueles lugares, mas como um local de potência. Nossos jovens não querem morrer de forma violenta. É isso que nós estamos fazendo aqui essa noite, dizendo para os jovens que ao invés de segurarem armas, eles podem segurar em máquinas fotográficas. Respeitem as favelas. Obrigado.